a little bit more about cybersecurity, Russia, and Trump's latest remarks. Let me turn to Joel Rubin, president of Washington Strategy Group and former deputy assistant secretary of state. Joel, so much to talk about. Let's begin yes. with the news conference on Wednesday, where Trump pretty much lashed out at the media, lashed out at the intelligence community. But for the first time, he seemed to admit that Russia did play a role in interfering with the U.S. election. In your opinion, what changed? Because up until that point, there were repeated denials. There were, ACA, and it was a remarkable moment when the president-elect said, yes, Russia played a role. But he then subsequently pulled that back a little bit, and it's unclear what his real view is. Uh, what's going on right now is very, very dynamic. We see his cabinet picks in testimony for Secretary of State, for Secretary of Defense yesterday and today, both saying that they believed Russia was involved. Uh, that Russia is uh, creating difficult situations for the United States, a menace to our national security in some instances. And we see the current director of national intelligence, Jim Clapper, consistently saying Russia was behind the hacks. And that pressure does have to tear down at the denials that President-elect Trump has been putting forward. And you know, another thing I've noticed is every time a question about Russia and hacking and cyber hacking comes up, he seems to deflect the attention to other countries. He says, you know, well, China is doing this and China is doing that. Why is there this sense of um, being chummy with Moscow, not so much with Beijing, but then go on and compliment the founder of Alibaba, who happens to be Chinese, Jack Ma, and talking about a very good business relationship and all this other nonsense. So my question to you is, are we getting mixed messages first from China and why the difference in tone between Moscow and Beijing? Deciphering the intent is extraordinarily difficult right now. And as you described, there are different information nodes occurring at the same time. It's no secret that governments do spy on other governments, that they do hack into systems. This is done. Intelligence professionals consistently point that out. What was different about the Russia infiltration is that they then took that information and used it in an influence operation in the public manner, as our intelligence community said unanimously, to influence the election. And that's distinct. Now, the response from the Trump uh, organization, the Trump uh, uh, officials, is that, well, this happened in 2015 from China. It's not the same instance. These are not identical. They need to each be treated differently and distinctly. Clearly, they don't want to answer some of the tough questions, including yesterday at the press conference. The president-elect did not answer all the questions related to the Russia hack, and it's only increasing congressional frustration, media pressure, and public uh, demands for real information about what took place. And just for the record, Beijing has repeatedly said China, too, is a victim of hacking. It opposes cyber attacks on any forum. China has also said it's willing to work with the incoming Trump administration to fight cyber crime. So, again, I'm baffled by Trump's uh, Every, uh, every opportunity he gets, he wants to drop China in the equation. Well, uh, it, China has been used uh, consistently throughout this election cycle as a, a foil, sometimes with leg for legitimate reasons, concerns about the trade imbalance, and that is pointed out, but also as a deflection tactic. And uh, you're right. Uh, the cyber issue, it, it's one that we have not yet uh, dealt with on a policy level. Congress, the executive branch, President Obama, they never came together in the unified cyber law that would enhance American national security. And globally, the same problems persist. So we're going to need to have President-elect Trump and the Chinese and all governments really engage on this. And finally, Joel, I want to ask you about the relationship between the President-elect and the intelligence community. Yes. It seems rather hostile and, uh, and very adversarial. Have you ever seen anything like this? And doesn't Donald Trump need the intelligence community to do a good job as president? Uh, the president, the president-elect, but the president is the number one consumer of the American intelligence community's work. If he can't have a relationship with the intelligence community, he is not going to be served well on key issues and crises. And uh, my sources, my, my former colleagues in the intelligence community are all very concerned. There is a lot of discomfort with being described as uh, analogous to na Nazi Germany. Uh, and, and there is going to need to be a lot of relationship mending going forward. All right. Joel Rubin, as always, thank you so much. My pleasure.